What's up, Shoe Schwab? It's time for a fantastic podcast. This time I have Yost. He's from the Netherlands. He does solar energy, and he's going to teach us a lot of stuff about it. One, tell us a little bit about your education, where you come from, and why you came to Canada. Okay. Oh, uh, like you said, I'm uh, coming from uh, the Netherlands, born in the Netherlands. I uh, studied building engineering at the University of Technology in Eindhoven. So. Originally, I was a building, a- I'm still a building engineer, of course. I started uh, when I was like 10, 10, 12 years old. I always wanted to become an architect. And uh, so I did, wow. I went to university. And then in the second year of university, uh, there were a lot of ideas in my mind, but I couldn't get them on uh, on paper. And then we had one course of uh, computer-aided design. It was brand new at that time, and we're talking about 1985. So pretty new at that uh, time, and nobody liked it apart from me and another uh, colleague. And so, oh man, that is uh, cool. That's really interesting. So uh, I start uh, looking into that uh, more and more, and was, everything was was uh, extremely new. So in my third year, I decided, that, okay, I'm gonna leave uh, the archi- architectural part and, and switch towards uh, computer aided uh, design also switched to more business administration, so uh, I went away from original building engineering to, uh, to computer aided design, which was still part of uh, the building engineering department. So, so why was it that you decided solar panels was the future for you? Uh, that, 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 that came out quite a lot uh, later, uh, because I started first working as a, as a business consultant uh, right. on automation projects in uh, in construction uh, industry. That's interesting, okay. Yeah, so that's where I, uh, I started, was a management consultant for, uh, for seven years, and then more and more I got involved with uh, computers. It's a long story, by the way. <laughs> another more podcast, story. another time. But uh, then... Uh, in Holland, uh, energy became very expensive, so I was always interesting in, in and my explorer always interesting in new things. So I thought, okay, that's kind of uh, nice. And st- still, uh, of course, I was looking into hot water systems, so solar uh, heating. Okay. Uh, so solar collectors on, uh, on on roofs, but it was still quite new and in an experimental stage. And then uh, we're talking about uh, 10 years ago, uh, they started promoting, uh, the government started promoting uh, solar Subsidies energy. Subsidies and like, let's get yeah. this going, we need to actually do something for our okay. future, yeah. yeah. So at that time, <laughs> the panels were really ex- expensive, the first... Uh, oh yeah, I'd uh, imagine, like just astronomical. No one could afford them except for the ultra rich. Yeah, yeah, it's like, uh, uh, right now you can buy the same uh, installation probably for uh, 40% of the price I paid at that, uh, Time. But, uh, wow! Had, yeah. So th- those were I had three panels, one uh, one inverter and one uh, rack, and that uh, at that time it cost three thousand uh, dollars. And nowadays uh, you pay fifteen hundred dollars, uh, probably sixteen hundred. You can get some uh, probably okay stuff at Canadian Tire. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Although Canadian Tire is pretty expensive. Yeah, you you, yeah. you, 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 you can. Yeah. But uh, and, and that was kind of the the starting point. Huh? So I had to pay like three thousand uh, dollars, but I got one thousand dollars back from the. That's the not government. bad. So I started really really small, and then uh, right away after installation, you see your uh, be you your hydro bill just drops right drop, off. dropping wow. uh, down. Huh? Although it was a small system, you see the difference. So the next uh, year I thought, okay, that's kind of nice, let's do that uh, again. And I started uh, also contacting family, hey, uh, you can get up a great... Uh, yeah, this is a great deal right now, service. government's doing this, This you drop your hydro bike like that, like it's, you're dumb not to do it. Yeah. So no, that's fantastic. So the, 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 the next uh, year again, uh, three more uh, projects, all our uh, family member, uh, family was also uh, involved, neighbors were in, uh, involved, so it was kind of a big community. Uh, I love thing. it. And that was a starting uh, point, and then uh, after the third year they, they, they stopped the, the grants. But even uh, then, I, uh, I I was working uh, at that time. I was wor- self-employed, working as a business, so I yeah. could uh, deduct that for my for my taxes. So I got a fifty percent rebate for uh, for taxes. So yes, uh, that's the way. Uh, to that's go. the way to do it. Well no done. GST, no PST. Yeah. So uh, that's so fantastic. Awesome. Okay. So yeah. why did you come over to Canada and do this? So. Uh, in 1997, that was the first time I immigrated to... Uh, 97? Wow, yeah, you've been here for a while. 
Yeah, no, I hadn't been because uh, I immigrated for the first time in 1997. Worked for a computer company in uh, in the lower mainland, so okay. in, in Langley. And then uh, we had the the top of the market, and we also had the bottom of the market. So after two years, they decided to close uh, their office. Yeah. I tried to start working over uh, over here, but the things what I would like to do was uh, pretty uh, pretty difficult. You have to travel a lot, so you don't have any private life. Yeah. So at, that t at the same time that my uh, job ended over uh, over here, uh, another customer of Holland uh, contacted me again for the, mm. the, the seventh or the eighth time and <laughs> said, "Hey, we have a problem, and uh, we think you are the guy that can solve our problem." Guess what? Uh, you're a consultant now. <laughs> can you come over and, and talk? So I said, "Okay, well, but I love Canada, uh, so I." Well, they decided to talk to them, and they they had the perfect solution uh, for bis the business wise for me uh, because I could really was really challenged in, in solving their uh, their issue. Right. But I have to leave uh, had to leave Canada, so I left Canada. Your visa but was up. I still had friends over here, yeah. and uh, so I always stayed in contact and came back uh, every year. Uh, after a couple of years, I also had a, a very old motorhome uh, in Langley, staying at my uh, my friends. So. Like five years ago, you know, uh, like seven years ago, I started coming back using my motorhome uh, yeah. uh, again. Traveled around with my with my mom over here in BC. That's cool. That's so cool. For for a month, which was uh, which was great. And then, uh, like five years ago, uh, we were on another trip, and then uh, we were at Trout Lake, and uh, yeah, there's where I met my uh, my wife. And uh, well, she, at least uh, we were uh, my mom and. Uh, uh, and I did a small hike, and then at a certain moment, um, walking a bit faster than my mom. She's 89 right, uh, right. right now. So uh, I said, "Hey, where's my mom?" So I started looking in the bag, and then she was talking to uh, to your to future Nancy. wife, eh? Yeah. So then I, I walked back, and we started <laughs> talking, and then uh, well, uh, yeah. there you go. You're married now. Well point. done. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, so we started dating, and then uh, yeah, and I, I, I like the. the even uh, before I landed uh, the first time in uh, in Canada it was 1994. Uh, I, I was flying uh, above uh, Canada. And I said, oh man, this is a great place. This is home. And it still, it always felt like uh, like home. I'm Dutch, but yeah. I feel uh, like 51% uh, Canadian and 49%. Uh, I, I have a couple Dutch. of Dutch friends, and they're like, yeah, Canada is the best place to be. It is. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's free. Like. You don't have to be in space. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, exactly. So, uh, although life in uh, in the Netherlands was was great, uh, yeah, uh, it was the easy choice for me. Uh, easy choice. Was, well, do you uh, miss it back home at all? Yeah, well, uh, the, the last seven years uh, after my brother died, uh, I start uh, and moved back to uh, to my mom's place and uh, close to my sister-in-law because she had uh, uh, she and uh, my brother had four kids. Uh, well, from seven to ten years, so wow. I started taking, kind of taking care of them for uh, for a bit in the in the weekends. Yeah. So, and I uh, I sold my house, moved back to uh, to my mom's place, bought my mom's uh, house. So we were kind of living together, although like four or five days a week I was working uh, outside of the house and never at uh, never at home. home. So. And then, but then, uh, my mom has dementia already for ten, uh, ten oh years. So that, that makes it a bit more complicated to leave uh, Holland. Thanks. You guys like more coffee? No. Nope. Uh, I can wait. I'm good. Yeah. Thank you. So, but th th that's the difficult part. But uh, yeah, you also have a private life, yeah. and uh, yeah, I really had uh, yeah, was very. Ooh, ooh delicious. delicious. Thank you so much. So when did you actually make your own company, like here in Canada? So that that's, uh, started uh, last year in September. So I, I, I moved, kind of moved over two years ago, but I still was uh, working on uh, building a train tunnel in, in the Netherlands. You're building a train tunnel? Okay, which train tunnel then? Like the, the train tunnel underneath the city of uh, Delft. That's so cool. <laughs> so it was 2.4 kilometer train tunnel, and then was the quality manager on that uh, the 
the project, so uh, and it was kind of the end of the project. But the project took ten years to build, to, to design the tunnel, and to build the tunnel, and to finish it. So and uh, it was finished last year in, in August. So that was kind of the end wow. of my project. That's, that's really I could cool. do a lot of things remotely, so that was was kind of good. But I have to travel back to. Uh, you have to go back and forth once. Yeah, a while like uh, six, seven times a year. I went back to uh, and stayed there for two. Uh, two oh wow. Weeks came back and then uh, started working over here. That's so really after cool. that was finished, I started my, my company over uh, So you, how, over how old is your company right now? Like a year old? Yeah, just a bit more than a year just old. Just a baby, so, yeah, I like no, it. No, I'm a fresh guy. That's uh, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so what is it that we have here? What have you chosen for us to try? i chosen the, the omelet with uh, mushrooms, spinach, and feta cheese. Yeah, that looks really, really good. So, what is it about G Pops that you actually like about the? Because your your wife loves the coffee here. Yeah, we, she's like this is the only place I'll ever drink coffee. Yeah, yeah. So we, we uh, most of the time we go over for for breakfast uh, over here. So like right. like once uh, once a month, not not every weekend, but once uh, in a month. And yeah, we really love the the, the coffee over uh, over here. And, uh, yeah, and, uh, it's nice to have a Sunday morning uh, breakfast to do something different than uh, yeah, just, just working and uh, staying at home. Always oh. working, yep, always working. <laughs> I'm excited to dig into this. Yeah. I haven't actually had one of their almost yet. Their burgers are amazing. Like, I haven't tried um, six ounce okay. homemade patties. Yeah, yeah. they're solid. <laughs> okay, well, that's good. So you put solar panels on houses mainly. That's that's your main gig. Yeah. They yeah. Uh, uh, most of them are, are, are uh, yeah, residential installations. No uh, business uh, installations uh, yet. But that's right. It's something I will start working on in this winter. Well, business installations. Like there's a, there's a lot of people that are like, okay, I want solar panels so I can live off the grid. And we were talking beforehand, and you're like, no, that's just not really how it works. <laughs> no. Um, but industry, like industry, like how many businesses would actually care to have solar panels that would actually fit a lot of their needs? Because some industries are like, I need 240 or 360s power, like I need big yeah. power. Yeah. Like that, if solar panels can actually provide that amount of energy at once. If you have enough, uh, enough, surface, enough solar panels, surface, enough uh, batteries, enough, surface, <laughs> enough space, uh, yeah, you can. Sometimes you uh, you, you cannot. I, we're working on, on, on projects um, that uh, uh, the, the amount of surface is not uh, enough, uh, so you, you cannot put on a ground mounted system like a rack or a pole, uh, and that, yeah, that, that might be sometimes uh, an issue. But even then, uh, if you can can top it off, uh, for instance, in residential installations, uh, there's a step one and a step two, and a step one is roughly uh, like 9.5 cents, but step two is 14.2 uh, uh, cents. So if you can top that uh, that off, you have the, the maximum uh, profit. Oh. So that, that that that's why residential is uh, so is interesting, but. Yeah, there the, are the, the different solutions, and uh, like, and I always say that to my uh, my customers, uh, you can start small. Uh, like in, in my case now, I uh, in my house in Holland, I have 22 uh, panels on my uh, my roof, uh, but I started with three, uh, and then another three, and then uh, another uh, six. So you don't have to start big; uh, you can start small, and uh, even for 25 or 50 percent of your uh, consumption, uh, providing with uh, solar energy. Okay, wow. That's really cool. So a lot of people don't use it to just be off the grid. I mean, they'll use it to obviously lessen their power bill, but it's the the step up, those those, le those three levels that you don't want to hit two levels. Yeah. Two levels. You don't yeah. want to hit that second level, and that's what people use a lot of solar panels to just stay behold, below that threshold. Or where people actually try to like really cut off the amount of power that they actually consume from the grid. They they they. Um a lot of customers uh, are not very fond of BC. Uh, no, they're not. BC, BC Hydro. Uh, so uh, I have a couple of customers. They said, "Okay, I would like to stay away from as far as possible." So sometimes that means that they would like to go off grid. Uh, so have a battery. Uh, How system. difficult is that? Uh, in the winter time, you, you don't really have that much surface area. In when it's cloudy, like you need intensity light to be able to actually charge those. Exactly. Those batteries. Exactly. You need you need a lot of backup power to to have that, and that, that, that that's uh, one thing that is uh, makes it a bit more complicated. The other uh, thing is that uh, battery systems are extremely expensive. So if you 
to have an ac uh, a rough calculation, if you decide to have uh, like a five thousand or one a ten thousand dollar uh, solar array, mm -hmm. uh, just as an example, mm -hmm. uh, if you would like to have a battery system, uh, you at least have to double it, and uh, sometimes even uh, more because the battery systems are so expensive and a lot of management going uh, wow. going around. So, do you really want to do it then? Uh, BC Hydro does have a, a B, um, an ad metering uh, program, mm -hmm. so they it's kind of free of charge, and they are the, the, the cheapest battery system you have. Uh, the only problem is that uh, in one percent of the time uh, you might have a, a blackout uh, where there's no uh, connection at all. Uh, but do you want to pay that much money for uh, having that backup? Uh, is that uh, the wise investment? And sometimes uh, it is if you have a lot of blackouts. Yeah. Uh, but if it really uh, happens, then okay. Well, we might be uh, one hour without power, but uh, no issue. Yeah. Yeah. It's you know so I've but been without power for like 48 hours on the grid. So one hour without it, that's okay. No, I, I, but, but, <laughs> but that depends on the uh, situation. If you are a farmer and you have milking machines or what, so uh, yeah, yeah. So if they say no, that that's not an option uh, for me. But even then, you can uh, look for a hybrid system, uh, have the connection to the grid, but also have a bit of backup power. So, uh, plenty of uh, options, uh, options. Are there, out there. What seems to be the most popular for the for the regular consumer, four-person household, two two <laughs> adults, two kids? What seems to be the ideal situation if they do not want to be completely off the grid? So, if they're just using power to uh, be able uh, to subsidize. Yeah, if you. Uh, if you choose to have uh, the, the option of a grid connection, um, hmm. that would be the, be the ideal and cheapest uh, way to do it. Solution and just um, yeah, hook it up to the to the grid. Uh, and you can see on on your your hydro bill, but also if you look on the internet, you will see exactly how much uh, you. Uh, Use and uh, right away they take it off your uh, your account so you can see how much. Yeah, we were talking about the credit thing yeah. and then the yearly. Uh, they'll either pay you out or obviously you owe at the ve yeah. very end of it. But they actually do pay back a certain amount of dollars to you if they owe you, which is cool. They do. They do. So how do that? They obviously have a special meter that reads in and out the ebb and flow of power coming the, the, in. The, the, those are the the, the, the modern uh, smart meters. They uh, they know exactly how they uh, how much they sell to the to the customer, but also how much they you uh, give in back. some cases receive from the wow. from the customers. So and uh, yeah, you can track down uh, that on your app or your uh, on your, in your computer. That is really really neat. Yeah. Huh. How many solar panels does it typically take per household? That, how many do you want to install to either A, have it completely off the grid, or B, have it be part of the grid and just subsidize power? That, that, there's no answer to that. It's literally the size that of the house and how much power consumption you think you're going to use? or Yeah, because um, some some people, they uh, have a, a Canadian, um, Canadians are very moderate uh, consumption, uh, which is uh, it can be uh, six, seven, uh, eight thousand kilowatt hours, which is modern, but is twice as much as uh, the Europeans. Uh, really? Use. Why? Uh, uh, Canadians use three times uh, more uh, electricity than uh, Europeans does, or than the average world does. Why? Just they can just power hogs when they when they people are talking about there's an energy crisis. <laughs> is it because of North America? North like, America, they just beautiful. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, and, and then yeah, so, so that, yeah, that, that that that's the uh, that, that's the case. Wow, that is and really interesting. Like like if you, if you look, for instance, at your um, refrigerator, uh, they use three times more uh, energy than. Uh, than a European refrigerator, but they're also two times bigger than a European refrigerator. No, is that because it's just 120 power versus 240? That, that that's also uh, a difference because 240 is more uh, more efficient, but it's also a matter of size. Yeah, it's size like, of the fridge. Yeah, it's like uh, if you look outside and uh, you see uh, all the, the big uh, ACs trucks and uh, driving uh, 
driving by. Yeah. Like, you will not see that in. Uh, no, you guys Europe. use trains, don't you? <laughs> oh, we use trains, but also uh, the, the, the size of the the cars we have. Uh, because energy is very expensive in uh, in Europe. Uh, fuel is very expensive in uh, in Europe. Uh, so we have small cars, very energy efficient. Yeah, uh, yeah we have cars. big hogs. If if you uh, if your energy is uh, is cheaper. Yeah, you, uh, you don't matter that that much, and we were exactly the same in in Europe 30 years ago because gas was cheap and uh, nobody cared. But if prices go up, uh, people start behaving uh, differently. differently. Absolutely, I remember when gas started, prices started to go up here. I mean, I actually started driving when it was a dollar ninety seven a liter, okay, and that was yeah. like I've, I've seen it as high as a dollar sixty seven a liter, like. And now it averages out like a dollar twenty, dollar forty, somewhere in yeah, there yeah, during yeah, the yeah. year. It's just wow. I can only. Im but European fuel is also higher octane than ours. Yeah, it's pure. It, it is. So it's more efficient. Mm. At least the burn is supposed to be more efficient. That's 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 the, that's the yeah. theory on it. Yeah. Like people used to put mothballs into old fuel or fuel in like the '60s because it would actually up the octane of the fuel. Oh, yeah. It doesn't do that anymore. But <laughs> So two, two, one, two things that I want to go over is one, the battery systems, and two, the possible lack of silver that t the, the traditional um, solar panels are, are made out of. So let's start with the batteries. Yeah. Now the batteries are always a problem. There's battery fatigue, there's battery death, there's, there's fires possible, there's lots of things that can go wrong with them, mm -hmm. and the expense. Because you already said like yeah. double your money, at least exactly at least, at least double your money. So, yeah. what what is it about batteries that make them ridiculously expensive? The the demand is less uh, demand. Uh, lithium uh, there's not. Uh, we have uh, lithium that, uh, but it's uh, it's uh, rare. Uh, it's not as uh, like sand or whatsoever. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's more uh, expensive to uh, to uh, to harvest. Is it harvest? Is the correct word? To, to get the the lithium out of uh, the soil. So that that makes lithium batteries expensive. And in the past, uh, there was not a huge demand on lithium. So mm -hmm. uh, there's not a huge demand. Prices are high. Now with uh, modern electrical vehicles, uh, prices are going down and down and down because there's more demand, uh, the, 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 but there's also more uh, production. So where does the world's lithium mostly come from? Is it Canada? Because Canada has a, like a lot of nickel mining and they do a lot of strip mining for nickel and that is dirty business. But <laughs> Which is a problem with batteries in general is it does take a lot of resources to make one. Yeah, and recycling is still a uh, still a big issue for uh, for batteries. Yeah, and and especially the old lead uh, acid uh, acid batteries uh, were complicated. But even uh, lithium batteries, uh, yeah, you have to solve that uh, that issue. Mm -hmm. yeah, although, if you look at the the modern uh, deep cycle uh, batteries you, you uh, are using for uh, for solar installation. They uh, have a 10 year warranty, so they, they and then most of them they last for uh, 15, uh, 15 years. 15 it's years? A, it's still an uh, issue to, to think about. So, what about your getting your investment back? Because, what is the average cost of a system that you put on a house? Like, uh, on like, I don't know, a 3,000 square foot house, what kind of system? Like, I know math is hard, quant, everything, it's difficult. But, like, there's got to be like an average price point of how much. That system is going to cost ish the, when you're going to paying it off, and then you're going to need a new battery at this point. So just expect to keep. Yeah, well, li like I, I said, uh, said that the, 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 there's no. It's very difficult to have an average price. So I have a customer that uh, that bought a system for mm -hmm. uh, sixty-five uh, hundred dollars. Yeah, and uh, that's not bad. No, no, that's not uh, not bad. Yeah, and 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 it doesn't cover his uh, electrical bill 100 percent, but uh, for him it's a start, and he would like to add up uh, more panels in How the coming years. How difficult is it to actually just add more panels? You just sort of put them on, plug it in, and yeah. you just add another panel, basically. Roughly, yeah. Roughly, yeah. Like uh, that, that uh, in, in uh, layman's uh, terms. Uh, uh, if your elect, if, you, if your wiring is uh, is okay uh, to to your electrical uh, panel, that right. can handle extra load. Then it's kind of uh, having an extension cord, uh, roughly uh, connected to the 
That's neat. To the, to the micro inverters which you uh, norm which I normally uh, use. So based on that, uh, yeah, it's not that uh, that difficult. Uh, as long as uh, your your electrical part uh, to your panel is, uh, is can 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 handle the, the extra load. So that that's not the uh, the issue. Uh, but yeah, I also have customers that uh, have a forty thousand uh, dollar installation. It's Crown Mountain and whatsoever. So there's, there's a wide variety. There's a variety between uh, eight panels and uh, a variety between sixty. Uh, okay. So panels. what is the cheapest price point that someone could jump in and? If someone's like, okay, I want to start this li this life, start going off the grid or subsidizing my power in some way, you obviously have some sort of smaller package-based thing that people can just sort of start with versus going, I have a $50,000 unit for you. Yes, I do. You don't have a, a, a standard package. Uh, oh, no, you wouldn't. Yet. But a, 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 everything is uh, stable-made. But in the winter time, I will start uh, working on making different uh, packages so people know uh, if I have, uh, uh, for instance, a, a six panel or an eight panel uh, installation, I have uh, this type of panel with this type of uh, inverters, I pay this uh, this amount. Uh, so, so what I'm trying to do is, is have packages like, okay, a starter's package for $5,000, mm -hmm. $7,500, $10,000. Uh, that's kind of the, the thing I'm, I'm working uh, on in the winter uh, time but to make it more easy and adaptable uh, for people uh, because if I start talking about yeah we don't know and uh, might be 15,000 might be 20,000 yeah let's uh, take a look at the house they're already gone yeah I'd imagine so do you I'd imagine you prefer to work on new builds but most people would obviously have an old build with an old house how difficult is it to actually install new a solar panel on the roof of an old mill like a, do you have to like remove some of the, the roofing to replace it do you have to think like, how does it actually that work is it all, all my suspended? installations I did right now are kind of uh, apart from the, the ground mounted systems are retrofit so, so you just attach it to the, to the existing uh, roof and you leave the, the surface as it uh, as it is and uh, so what you, you do is if you have an uh, asphalt uh, roof with asphalt uh, singles, you kind of lift the you, you search for the um, for the trusses, and you uh, you connect a, a L bracket to the to the trusses and, mm -hmm. and make it make it tight, and then you have special flashing that goes over the the bracket and underneath the the shingles. So. Uh, Oh, all, 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 all issues are, are solved, so there will be no uh, leakage for that. And they have those special packages, special flashing, so if you uh, install it properly, uh, there will be uh, no leakages. So what about durability? Because um, obviously there's going to be wind, there's going to be stuff hitting it, branches, trees, yeah, all, things, all, all the, all the systems are, <laughs> are based on the fact that they can handle wind loads, they can handle snow loads, the, 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 the panels uh, roughly uh, weigh like 22 kilograms uh, each, so there's, a, there's not a lot of extra load on uh, on the roof. So that that's not the issue. Most of the issues are uh, wind issues. So you have to have uh, really tight, really uh, tight connections. Uh, but uh, all the suppliers they they did it calculated in in the past uh, what kind of. Uh, screws you need to, to drill it into the to the hole and things like that so they really engineered it yeah yeah <laughs> i'm sure they did and on the other part if you have a flat roof you have for instance a ballast uh, system what do you mean a ballast system? so so what they uh, you, you have a special uh, pvc pudding where you put the the the, the, the rack on yeah. And then, uh, because of wind loads, yeah, uh, it might, catch might be wind blocked. like hard. Yeah. So what you do is you have standard <laughs> concrete uh, blocks, and you put ballast uh, well, on oh. the pudding, uh, so uh, it will not be uh, blown away. And then you don't penetrate the roof at uh, at all, which is of course uh, great because uh, that's the, the yeah you don't uh, want uh, to the, you don't want to splash it. It's a flat roof, uh, so the, yeah, the, those are uh, also uh, good, good options. That is, that is really neat. Yeah, because yeah, ha having anything like that with a flat panel, anything, having it catch a 20 mile an hour wind will, is a lot of force, mm -hmm. especially on something that's a one by two meter area. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the, the, like uh, if you have, for instance, the, the systems on a flat uh, roof, uh, you also have uh, a wind deflector, yeah. uh, so wind cannot okay. get uh, underneath it. And uh, do you, you know the the car, the Bugatti Veyron? Sorry, Bugatti Veyron. It's a it's a supercar. It's worth like two and a half million dollars now, or two and a half million pounds. But it has an air brake on it, so it, it's going like 280 miles okay, an hour, yeah. and then the air brake goes up, yeah, and yeah. it has more stopping power than a 16 tire semi. Oh, okay. That is yeah. incredible. Okay. And it's just it's just yeah. a fin that comes up and just does this, and it drives it into the ground and it just. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's amazing. And that's your new car. Uh, oh, I wish <laughs> it is. It is definitely on my list. <laughs> Bugatti Veyron. Oh yeah, no, definitely. Re I want I want that more than I want a McLaren. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. But no, no, I uh, yeah. The um, what they're made out of is traditionally silver for the for the panels, right? No, no, it's so uh, okay. No, now it's sand, but has it always been sand or is it just silicium? Yeah, just silicium. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and of course they are looking also for new type of uh, ones that are better that conductors and yeah. absorbers and heat and yeah, okay. Yeah, because uh, like, like if if you look at a at, at a solar uh, cell, uh, regular panels made out of uh, sixty or seventy two uh, solar cells, and they're uh, the size they're that big, right? The, the maximum efficiency, uh, theoretically, you can get a 30% out of the, the, the silicium uh, solar cell. So they're always looking for new materials to, to boost up the, the efficiency. And nowadays, if you look at the, the, the modern uh, solar panels, so the average is you know, roughly 16 and a half, 17% uh, efficiency right. for a solar panel. And then some some panels are uh, 1980. Some and then the top of the line right now is 20, uh, roughly 22 uh, percent efficiency. Of like so sun hits it, it absorbs 22 percent yeah, of that of and stores the it away. The sun, yeah, exactly, and uh, put you, uh, makes it into a DC uh, current, yeah, direct current. Does, aren't, isn't our grid AC? Hmm? Yeah. It's, so yeah, why, why is it stored AC? In DC? Yeah, be because that's how solar cells. Uh, Work at it. They, they, really? They produce, uh, they DC, produce DC. Well, I suppose it doesn't have to actually travel that distance because that was the problem with Edison's invention of DC. Is it? It just didn't have the distance as AC did. Because mm -hmm. he, he was like, no, we have to put like a station every hundred meters or something. Yeah. So if it doesn't have to go that far, yeah. I suppose DC would be less dangerous, at least. So, mm -hmm. but that's just how they work. Is it? It that's runs it, stores it in DC. Yeah. That's same amazing. Same like uh, your battery uh, or your car. It's also I didn't DC, okay, well, uh, that. System. I did not know. Huh? <laughs> so your house can run off of AC, DC, 120, 240, just the same as the other. It's just, the only difference is how far it can really travel. Yeah. So, so what you see over here in, in, in North America is uh, you have the solar panels and attached to uh, each solar panel or two or four solar panels. You mm -hmm. have an inverter. It directly converts the the DC power into AC uh, power. Uh, so at the uh, kind of at the back of the solar panels, uh, there's also AC, just AC going to the to the electrical uh, huh. panel. So uh. that, that that problem is uh, is solved. Uh, that's also an option to have uh, string in, uh, inverters, which means that uh, if you have, for instance, uh, an array of, of 12 uh, solar panels, and uh, uh, everything is kind of looped. And going to one uh, one inverter, but yeah, if one inverter breaks down, uh, twelve of the panels do not uh, work. If wow. you shade on on one of the the panels and it only produces fifty percent, all the other panels uh, only produce fifty uh, percent. So, uh, well, how often do you have to have a technician to come in and just make sure everything's running properly? Well, <laughs> uh, they are, uh, solar systems are very low on on maintenance. Once uh, it's hooked up, uh, normally it will work for the next uh, 25, 30, 35 really? uh, years. And the installation I have on my uh, my house installed the first installation uh, almost nine years uh, years ago. And the only thing I uh, do is, is clean the the solar panels once a uh, year, sometimes twice. Uh, Still like a pressure year. washing? Just no, 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 no pressure washing. Just uh, as a soft and uh, cloth and things oh. like uh, like uh, if you have too much pressure on, uh, it's made out of glass, so it wouldn't hurt. But I sometimes uh, attach uh, you know get a high pressure to the cable, so you don't want to do that. So it just a soft touches yeah. is better. Hmm. 
And, so, and that's kind of the only thing you uh, do. And of course, nowadays with the modern systems, uh, you can monitor everything uh, remotely, so you can exactly see what's, what's happening with the system. If there are uh, any problems with one of the, the panels that directly pops up and see, hey, this one is uh, producing less energy than the other ones. And then you can check out what's going on over there. Oh, that's cool. And it might be some blood poop or whatsoever, but... Uh, so, okay, so it might just be, it needs to be cleaned off, it's not producing as much power as the other ones, or it could just be a faulty connection, or it could be just literally anything. That small changes, like a couple of percent, you wouldn't see it, but if one panel is producing 50% less than all the other panels, uh, you will check that out. Uh, <laughs> check it out, yeah, because it's something, uh, something wrong. Wow. But, yeah, I'd like, uh, compared to, to cars, for instance, uh, there are, uh, in solar panels there are no moving parts, it's just electronics. Uh, it's just 27 or 60 uh, solar cells uh, connected to one uh, cable. It's kind of sealed on, on glass and, uh, and the PVC uh, underlay. Wow. Uh, so most of the time nothing will happen for the, for the next uh, 30, 35 years. Not unless the squirrels get at it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah you have to really take care of uh, that part. Yeah. That is yeah. that is really amazing. So you're finding that a lot more people are going to solar panel or alternative energy regardless of anything? Yeah, yeah. BC Hydro is a thing in, in here, but... <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah, uh, there is just a lot of interest uh, and over yeah. Of course, you're talking about an investment, but even then, uh, on, the, on the long term, and like you asked me the question uh, before, uh, the, the average payback time for uh, solar is really is, uh, some, somewhere between 12 and 15 years, depending on the installation you, uh, you, you have. It's not bad. Uh, but, uh, uh, because the, the, the lifespan of a solar array is roughly 30 to 35 years, you at least double, sometimes even triple uh, your, your investment. investment. Uh, so in the long term... Uh, you win. It's just it's you, a long you, have, you have a big win. Wow. Uh, in, in some cases, uh, people will save uh, $100,000 on their energy bills for the coming 30, uh, 30 years. So that, that that's big. And if you have a small system, it might be uh, $25,000 or $30,000. But that's yeah. a lot of money. Yeah, and you know what? And With energy costs just continuously <laughs> rising every dang day. Exactly. And, and, and it, it's, it's solid. Uh, it's uh, whatever the, the, the stock market does. It doesn't influence it. It will just start producing energy. Well, I suppose the actual nice thing is, is because the whole payback system, you would actually might make money just selling it back to the grid because it's it's literally that is that is actually really cool yeah. the way that you if, you if you think of that that in a long-term investment and having it pay back to you and then eventually possibly even paying you because you still have it after 15 20 years and then the energy cost even going up after that after 15 20 years like when you think about it in a percentage of I'm going to give this money yeah. and I'm going to eventually get this back, yeah. you're actually probably hitting some pretty good numbers there. Yeah, yeah, you do. That's and actually that, not bad. And, and, and that, that's that's a nice part. And like uh, when I started in Holland, uh, you see that okay, you know, my energy bill is uh, less, uh, and then uh, you start investing again. Okay, it's uh, becoming less, and now I don't have any energy bill uh, at all, uh, and my system is paid off. Uh, and if the if the government or PC Hydro decides to hike up the prices by 50 percent, don't ahead. You know what? Don't I, 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 I don't mind. Uh, whatever you do, because my system is paid off, I produce my own energy. So you're 100 percent off the grid, are you? Yeah, yeah I'm. Uh, uh, yeah, basically. I mean, you're attached, but you're basically yeah. done. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. amazing. Uh, every year, uh, I get money back from. Uh, energy company because I produce a bit more than I uh, consume, than I consume uh, which, is, wow. which is awesome. Oh, that is awesome. That is so cool. How many panels do you think you have on your house? No, no, 22. Tw 22 panels, and 22 that, panels. that's all it really took for you to, because yeah. it's just you and your wife, right? It's my system in Holland. Oh, it's your system in Holland. Yeah, okay. Because that, that's why I said that like eight okay. years I started No, I got you now. In, I got you now. In, 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 in that, but, uh, that's still amazing. Yeah. Like, you but, uh, that, that doesn't matter. Uh, like, uh, that's the main reason why we should do it. Uh, climate is, uh, is changing. And uh, so uh, it's a worldwide problem. And so, in fact, it doesn't matter. And right now over here, uh, I'm also looking into uh, to that, but we're also thinking about uh, building our own new eco-friendly uh, house. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's not wise to, uh, to put panels on your roof if uh, two years on the road you're going to move uh, to another place. 
Speaking of that, resale value. Does it actually bring up the house resale value? If you resell it, do you yeah. get back your investment? Yeah. Like, how does that really work? Most, most certainly, it will definitely uh, increase the, the value of your house uh, because you can you can prove to uh, the, the buyer that uh, this is the amount of money uh, they will save on their uh, energy bill, and so uh, yeah, the, the, that's guaranteed uh, money locked into the, the sale of the the, the house. And that's what exactly uh, over here. It's quite new, but it's exactly what you see in uh, in Europe. For instance, if you uh, invest uh, ten thousand uh, dollars uh, to put a solar array in your house, and you're gonna sell your uh, house uh, the next year, uh, you get ten thousand dollars back, or might be nine thousand five hundred. But uh, uh, there's money, and wow. especially if you can say, uh, well, I have a nice house, uh, and uh, do not be concerned about the. Uh, the consumption of energy because uh, it is, uh, there's a zero bill connected to, to it and uh, that, that adds value. Yes. I would be the uh, same as you have a car and say uh, you don't have to pay for gas anymore. So uh, yeah. uh, this is the, 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 the yeah. price of the, the car but gas is for free. Awesome. I'll take it. <laughs> no kidding. I've had a couple of buddies with company gas cards and like it's the best thing you'll ever have man. I could go to Vancouver for free. Yeah. <laughs> I just have to fill up here and make sure I can. I buy like 20 bucks of gas on the way back up and merit or something and fill up here again and you're good to go. No, yeah. It was really cool. <laughs> I, I, did an, uh, too, I had a business card in, uh, in the past and uh, I was uh, for free, so wherever you go and take a trip uh, to, to Switzerland and come, uh, come back and you don't have to pay anything. That's no. awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> Is there anything about solar panels that, that I missed? Like something like that? Oh, there's so much to, to talk about. I know, about. There's, there's tons. Uh, I mean, we could talk for like 12 hours, but. Uh, yeah, but, but uh, like, like if, you look, if, you were, if you're interested in, in solar panels, one of the, 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 the things you have to look into it, uh, ideally you need to have a, a south facing roof or south east facing roof or south west facing uh, something south east okay. e yeah so you want to have it it has to go from sun. has to go from east to, to to west east is uh, slightly better than uh, than west south is the best the south orientation hmm. so that's one thing you have to take uh, into account if, if you have a north facing uh, house and uh, so you really you only want to do one side of the roof because that's perfect side that uh, some, sometimes you do see uh, east west uh, facing uh, panels uh, so that that might be uh, be an option but you have to take that into uh, to account another thing that's also important is uh, solar panels do not like shade of trees or what so that's whatsoever. just it we really live in <laughs> we live in seminar this is the yeah. country yeah <laughs> uh, so if you have a lot of trees uh, around your uh, house, yeah, som sometimes uh, it's sad, but then it's not an option because you get too much shade on your panels, uh, and uh, yeah, the, you don't. It, it takes instead of uh, 30 years, it takes 20 years to get your investment uh, back. back. Uh, it is doable, uh, but uh, you only have to look into uh, those, those issues. Huh? Wow. Uh, and but. Uh, like uh, and, and we uh, just recently set up an, uh, a seminar as a community-owned solar array. Uh, people, for instance, if you rent a house and uh, you don't have any space to put solar panels on your roof, uh, that's why. Uh, and then you see that uh, quite a lot in, in Europe, and they have community-owned solar arrays. So you invest in solar arrays on a different place, and you get the money. Uh, investment uh, really uh, which uh, that, that was a really nice option and we just started a small project uh, really on the first united church okay and uh, yeah that, 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 that was kind of a pilot project for us and it would be great if we could uh, yeah, increase the, the amount of panels you put on over uh, that is so yeah. cool so th those are options too so you can have a house and i'll be like okay i have some cash I have a, don't have a house that's prime for what I want to do with the solar panels. I can go to you be like, hey, here's some money. Let's put some solar panels on your house. Let's make this energy efficient, and you can kick me back a percentage every year. We'll make a deal like that. People yeah. do that? Yeah, the, 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 those are the systems that work exactly the way uh, they do it in, in Europe. Over here. And, and basically, that's the, that's the thought. Uh, or, for instance, we have a, a big field over here. We uh, built uh, uh, a ground-mounted system. Uh, right. 
over here with uh, for instance 120 uh, panels uh, and we have uh, 60 uh, 60 people that are interested and everybody buys in uh, buys two panels of the of the system uh, so you divide all so the you can, cost you can literally have an investment group of solar panels and yeah. then sell it back to the grid yeah so that, that that's things are, i'm thinking about and really uh, that is so uh, cool yeah, because that would be the option for you if you have a, a rental property or you have uh, trees around your house and yeah, yeah you are I don't want to grow hay it. I don't want to grow hay I don't want to farm it let's just put some solar panels onto it let's get some investors into it yeah. and then that is that is actually really cool yeah and then uh, yeah we uh, from, uh, at the sea shop solar energy society they they started working on uh, on those uh, those issues and uh, there are a couple of legal issues that are now uh, they're, they're solved there was a lot of legal implications about installing solar panels. Uh, yeah, because uh, if you do that with somebody else, uh, oh. property, you have to uh, to make some arrangements. Uh, that's one part. The other part is uh, uh, you're not allowed to be, to have it as a business model over here. If you would like to do it as a society, friendship, because it has no uh, profit in, uh, involved. So then you get the potential. So hmm. You get the bench holders and things like uh, that, and you have to take care of how those investments work out. Otherwise, uh, you have to take care of a lot of issues. That is really cool. But yeah, we uh, we looked into that, and uh, yeah, we, we started small at the, the First United uh, Church, and based on that, uh, yeah, it would be great to, to upgrade it. Uh, a lot of loose over here, or uh, a lot of space where you could, could do that. So you're saying the first, first United Church, so is that a community thing of where people went in on, or is that the church themselves they bought from? No, uh, as a Sioux Shop Solar Energy Society. Oh, they did okay, uh, okay, they, 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 okay. they, they started the, the, the project, mm -hmm. and then uh, First United uh, yeah. Church, Jenny Carter, she said, well, uh, if you like, hey, you can put it on our uh, our roof, and then we also still start promoting uh, the community-owned solar array. Wow. So uh, eventually, so that's what the, the, the agreement uh, was. And so uh, what they found, we 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 uh, the bench holders from out of the Sushop Solar Energy Society, and uh, the nice part is the First United Church also had some sponsors that uh, donators mm -hmm. that to say, okay, uh, I have five hundred dollars and. Uh, I would love to see a community on solar array. Yeah. I am not interested in any uh, payback whatsoever. It's just my donation to the to church, yep. and uh, it's for a good cause because it will yep. reduce their uh, yeah. energy bill by, in this case, That's forty percent. Really cool. Wow! Wow! So, 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 so it's a combination over there between uh, donations and uh, the private investments. Uh, but the business, the, 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 yeah, it's not a business model, but uh, the model uh, because it's done from out of the Sushi of Solar Energy Society is a quite nice uh, model. That is really, really cool. So people people can invest in that right now. That's sort of being figured out yeah, currently. Be yeah, because uh, the difficult part is uh, you're not allowed to uh, to call it an investment. And, and because it's from out of the Sushi of Solar Energy, uh, people invest in it, yeah. they, they, they don't get uh, <coughs> interest on it. And as soon as you uh, will provide interest uh, on it, uh, that's the legal part, uh, it will become uh, complicated. But at our different business, uh, so business, you could set up a business model for uh, make it more commercial and uh, people invest in it. Is it's that an investment plan. what you're also working on? Because you're, you're, you're talking about you're working on something like that. Uh, you're working on yeah, I'm like... I'm, I'm thinking, you're thinking about, about it. Are you thinking, yeah. Because uh, uh, some people... Um, they don't have the funds. No, uh, what, what no, no. If, uh, uh, yeah. What if you have, uh, for instance, a thousand dollars and you would like to have you solar panels? Yeah. Uh, if you have thousand uh, dollars, it's not enough money to start a small system. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but what if you could uh, buy uh, uh, five percent of a, of a bigger solar array? No, you uh, it does, doesn't matter to you where the money coming. Uh, exactly. From, uh, as, as, as long as the same money is flowing to you. Yeah. But you said that BC Hydro really doesn't like to pay out to private people. Like nope. they don't. No, they don't. Uh, but they will. They, they, that, they, is that they, right? Uh, like they'll be yeah, forced they, to they because will, of this money. Uh, every every system you uh, that, that I'm designing, 
Now, uh, the first thing I look is uh, what is your average annual consumption. So if your annual consumption is roughly uh, like uh, 8,000 uh, kilowatt hours, right. I design a system that will fit the 8,000. Uh, you're not allowed to build a 20,000 uh, kilowatt hour system uh, for uh, just a consumption of 8,000 uh, Oh, hours. so you're literally not allowed so to just overbuild to nope. sell it back? Nope. Really? Yeah, because, uh, and in the past uh, you could, yep. but like a year ago, in uh, April uh, last uh, year, there were five customers in uh, NBC that had a huge energy bill where DC Hydro had to pay them five customers over that 4.5 million. And then they uh, they said we uh, had this is not uh, yeah guys the, the no. system how we uh, what we intended so they changed the system said no uh, from starting from now you're only allowed to produce uh, the same amount of uh, I mean, uh, energy as you consume I mean that's I find that kind of dirty because like let's let's face it it probably costs them obviously pennies to actually make a kilowatt hour in which they charge us a dollar whatever for it. Which means they're they're paying us back at the rate that we would buy it from them. So yeah, they would literally be losing millions of dollars, and it would probably wouldn't be sustainable if too many people actually did that. Because that that would that would kind of make sense. Because we they'd be paying us for the amount that we would buy it for. Huh? That is interesting. That's an issue. Because I like I don't know what their prices are, but uh, right now if you uh, residential housing, if you uh, look at step one, uh, it's uh, roughly 9.5 percent, mm -hmm. 9.5 cents a uh, kilowatt hour. They uh, they they probably will uh, are able to produce it roughly for I think about seven cents. I have no clue, but it's probably like seven uh, cents. It's mm -hmm. the cost uh, for them to produce the energy. Uh, so if they uh, if I put stop producing. Uh, uh, and they kind of lose uh, two and a half cents per kilowatt hour, uh, which uh, is a bad mi business model. <laughs> uh, so uh, from that point of view, uh, I can understand them. On the other hand, uh, globally, the, the energy consumption is growing and growing and growing. Oh, it is. So Rapidly. what they have to do is they have to start building uh, either more dams or find other solutions or buy uh, energy uh, from out of the US or whatsoever uh, in order to fill that, uh, for, uh, that, that need, to, to solve that uh, the issue. Yeah. Cold that fusion. Need. When we figure out cold fusion, everything will be different. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, if you, if you, if you uh, allow people to hook up to the, to the grid and you have uh, a solar array over here, you get more uh, grid stability. Uh, yeah, because, yeah, uh, yeah, you, yeah, have you would. You have, you have small producers uh, in uh, in town, so you don't have to, you have, you have to invest less in your infrastructure uh, to, to solve that, that issue. And if you find the right uh, balance, uh, even that's the 2.5 cents that you have to pay uh, uh, more, will never uh, will be best deal you can get because uh, investing in your infrastructure to building a new dam that like they do in uh, yeah. site C yeah uh, that will cost billions and billions of dollars and uh, so uh, I tax think money man who cares yeah <laughs> and so, so I think they they they, 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 they ma they're making a big deal uh, they, yeah they probably uh, just don't want to lose yeah. that that hold on the energy consumption yeah. no that makes sense I mean one of the, the worst things that the government is facing in the way of currency is crypto because it's not centralized, it's decentralized, mm -hmm. everyone owns it, it can't be fraudulated, it's, it is going to be, it is going to be one of the currencies of the future, it just is, whether it's Bitcoin or Litecoin or whatever coin, don't know, but decentralizing everything, because the internet is basically yeah. doing that, it's oh, yeah. it's allowing the people and everyone else to have the power versus the select few oh, yeah. that still hold it, and people don't want to give that up too easily, okay. but it, it's, it's yeah, yeah, they have to, it, it's just it's just where humanity is going to be going at some point, is complete de decentralization, yeah. at least I hope so, because it's better for the people at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, <laughs> sometimes uh, some film part is good that uh, some things are, are government controlled. But, that is uh, very true. But, um, you, you, uh, Elon Musk is going to own you the way to, to, to find Mars. The, 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 the balance and uh, like my, my experience with PC Hydro, that, uh, some issues they are difficult to handle with, uh, but it's also a process they are going uh, through and uh, I don't think they, they, they are the, the enemy. 
I, uh, some, I, I do uh, solo presentations at libraries, and uh, I, I see it's, it's like um, you have to find a combination. If you invest in, in stocks, you shouldn't go, uh, shouldn't do uh, investing only in a high-profile uh, stock. You should also have a, a balance, a nice basket yep. of different type of uh, stocks. And it's the same with, uh, with energy. Uh, like and sometimes fossil fuel is, is not the the enemy, but you have to find a combination of it between uh, wind power, between solar power, between hydro uh, yep, that's right. power. Uh, it's not. You shouldn't have one. One. It's got to be power. literally everything. Otherwise, you're going to use up that resource way too fast. It doesn't yeah. have enough time to get back. Yeah. Uh, so, so we should, uh, from my point of view, we should to, uh, start working together with the PC Hydro uh, to find oh, the, sure. the right uh, balance, uh, balance of everything. But, yeah, it's, uh, until now it's still PC Hydro with a, a strong line underneath uh, Hydro, uh, and it's not PC uh, Solar. But I think in the future uh, they will be more and more open to it because yeah, they they have to. Uh, provide solutions for the huge energy demand there is, mm -hmm. especially if people started uh, driving electrical vehicles and things like uh, that. Yeah. Where does the power come from? Yeah, and, uh, the hydro there. Have you seen the special road that they're making where it charges your electric car as you drive? That is so cool. Like, obviously it's going to cost ridiculous amounts of money to install, but it's technology that now exists. Charging your car as you drive, you'll never have to stop. <laughs> that is just so amazing. Where is it that you want to see solar energy taken in the next 15 years? Like, where do you, what do you want to see? You want to see like more people putting on new builds, retrofitting, uh, seeing farms, investment groups. Like, what, where do you want to see that go? I, I would like to uh, see a similar situation which you see in, uh, in Europe is that a lot of houses have. Uh, Solar panels on the roof that everybody uh, can be uh, like 50 percent or 100 uh, percent self-sufficient. I think that should be uh, the ideal situ situation. I think we should uh, look at options if you start building a new uh, uh, building, uh, integrate uh, energy-efficient parts to uh, to it. Have uh, you could have uh, solar facades and things like uh, like that. Yeah, but uh, nowadays, uh, yeah, everything is still very traditional uh, yep. over here. Yep. People have to, to change. I'm, I'm talking to, uh, to customers that uh, are building a new house and they put on a steel uh, roof and then later on uh, I can attach the, the solar panels to the steel roof, but uh, why not integrate the, the solar array in the, the original design yeah that's uh, it's, uh, one of the things that for instance which is quite nice uh, Tesla is doing with their Tesla roof and uh, they say yeah uh, we we have uh, a roof where the, uh, you don't have the, the asphalt singles anymore but you just have solar uh, panels solar panel on roof, your, uh, your roof and then that's the way how we cover it uh, yeah all so the you shingles so are so solar yeah. yeah so you have so solar shingles uh, which is uh, uh, the arcade is quite expensive, but the idea is really uh, it's there why, why, why have a traditional roof and put uh, solar panels on, uh, on it, but uh, and do not integrate it. Because as a complete noob to all that, I always thought that's how new builds were done. They weren't just put had a, a roof on and then suspended over top. I always thought it was just solar panel roof. <laughs> it yeah. turns out, no. What, what, is and, it? And, yeah. what is it you actually think of Solar City? Like, have you caused, like seen inspiration from them? Love what they're doing because they've they've made a huge movement to the states. Um, yeah, it's, it's the states. It's the states. Over there is uh, different. Uh, I, I think they they're doing a great job and uh, okay, setting an example uh, where people uh, can look at it. And, okay, uh, perhaps we should do a similar thing. Uh, yeah, over here, yeah, the model uh, works. Turns out, yeah. I mean, you almost went bankrupt uh, from it, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but 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 uh, yeah, but, but, <coughs> but it's good. Uh, uh, even even Tesla has the problems now. They are working on Model Three of their uh, right. like the carpet, even on the roof of Model Three. Uh, but they, uh, they they figured out that the, the first two models, although the panels were uh, quite good, uh, the installation part was too expensive. So they they, they had to to fine tune everything. 
and a couple of other companies like Dow, uh, they, they did exactly the same thing uh, 20 years ago and they gave up on it because uh, it was too complicated. But I think all those initiatives, uh, uh, we have to uh, switch from fossil fuels to uh, renewable energy and whatever renewable energy is. Uh, is so every uh, everybody who is involved in that and trying to make uh, a small change or a big change, yeah, it's uh, it's great. No, that's good. Everyone has to, needs to do their part and what they can do. Yeah. Where is it yeah. that um, new people can start educating themselves on um, renewable energies, but specifically solar panels? No, there's um, a lot of information, of course, on the internet. Well, you, well, you, you said that you do. A lot of public talks, right? Yeah. In, in the library. So when I, I did it uh, this year, and, and, and almost all the uh, the libraries in, uh, in the Sushwap uh, area, I did uh, commercial free uh, solar presentations on uh, what's happening with uh, solar energy, uh, what is the future, what are we heading to? Is there enough sun uh, to provide our our needs? Uh, all those kind of. Uh, yeah, we just have a billion years left, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what so, so, yeah, yeah, so, so the, the, those are the things uh, I do that's from out of the Sushok Solar Energy uh, Society. And, at the, and at, that's nice, uh, people are very interested in, uh, in that, so uh, and that's what we keep on, uh, what I will keep on doing uh, also next year, perhaps uh, slightly different than I did this year, because this is yet very general, perhaps I go more into detail, the, like the, the, the nuts and the bolts of solar energy. Uh, In these talks, that's really cool. Why that to next year, uh, what's the difference between several type of panels and things like, uh, like that. Yeah. That's really cool. So if I people want to catch one of your talks, they can find it on the Shishwap Solar Energy site or yeah. Facebook page, something like that? Yeah, should be there and then we have Facebook uh, How often do you page? give a talk? Uh, I, I used to do that sometimes uh, it was like every uh, every three weeks uh, and in the summertime sometimes uh, yeah, like uh, in July and then August was pretty quiet because then uh, libraries have their own uh, the things going on picked up yeah. in uh, the end of August and September and now uh, I mean, the last one I gave was in, uh, in Blind Bay right. and I'm still uh, like to get in touch with, with Parkland to have my uh, last presentation over uh, there. Very cool. And, and all the information uh, will be provided via our Facebook page and on the website of the Sushop Solar Energy Society. What is your your business and how people can contact you directly? Like if they want to like talk about solar directly with you, see about a quote, yeah, they, how can they contact you? Do you have a number? Yeah, yeah I, uh, my telephone number is 250-515-6311 uh, and you can look it up the, the internet, it's uh, aplussolarsolutions.ca aplussolarsolutions.ca so that that's how you can uh, contact. I'm uh, working uh, from out of the innovation uh, center. So if you are at the innovation center downtown Seminar, you can yeah, find me. Giant colored the building. Floor. Yeah, I love yeah. that giant colored yeah. building. It's a great building. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, uh, Billy did a great job over there. Yeah, it's, it's nice. It's a very nice uh, environment over uh, there. Really enjoy it. Uh, so that's where I, you can uh, you can find me. That's awesome. And of course, there's also a link on uh, the. The, the Facebook page or the, um, the website of the uh, Sushop Shop Solar Energy Society. Cool. Awesome. Thank you very much. This has been a much. fantastic yeah. talk. Thank okay, you. Good. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Peace. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Your attention means the world to me. Please, please, please share this. Pass it on. And tell your friends it's the best podcast in the Shoe Shop. <laughs> Let me know what you thought. Have a good day.